All right. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. I am getting on live this evening. And um, I just wanted to talk about y'all. I wanted to talk about um, a crowning moment today. And I believe that this is going to encourage somebody. I talked about this Bible character um, that so many people can relate to. OK, um, I talked about him at this event on Friday um, called Night of the Prophets. OK, and uh, it really fit right in. Last week, I talked about overcoming being overwhelmed because many times we can get so easily overwhelmed, you know, just trying to figure things out or we're multitasking. We have so much going on. Sometimes we're overextending our, ourselves. Um, we, you know, just have so many different tasks. Some things God may have sent us to do. Some things we decided that we were going to do. Um, it, you know, and it's so important to have discernment so we can determine which is which, because if God sends you something or he gives you a task to do, he's going to help you through it. And it's not to say it's not going to be a challenge, but, um, you know, you're not by yourself. Right. So, you know, this story, you know, this Bible character really encouraged me. I pray that it's going to encourage you, if especially if you've ever felt um, like the underdog. I think that's like a phrase that um, I think many Americans used, or if you felt like the way the Bible uh, describes it is the least of them, uh, you know, not the one that uh, was is the most appealing or, um, you know, where it's like, oh, it's so obvious, like that this person is going to be somebody. Um, this story is about Gibeon, okay? Um, I was, I was, you know, I feel like at, there are times in my life where I, I relate, you know, very close to Gibeon. Um, you know, Gibeon is a leader, by the way. He's a leader and he had a weighty assignment. You know, so Gibeon wanted, I believe Gibeon desired uh, to please God. Uh, he had a close relationship with God. So many of us want to hear from God. We want to know how to hear from God clearly so we can get instructions and direction so we can fulfill our purpose and all of that. Um, but Gibeon, he had a big assignment, yet he had doubts. He had some, some serious doubts. And I can understand why, because God was calling him to be a rescue. And I'm even reminded right now um, that, and this is what I talked about last Friday, is many times we are um, diving into the wrong thing, the wrong opinions, right? Uh, we're so used to hearing other people's perspective of us or um, our, our brains are, um, uh, I guess, storing information about things that happened uh, in the past that were bad experiences, but then it guides us um, in a way that inhibits us in the future, if that makes sense. Because of what happened in the past, I'm limiting myself in the future because I don't want to repeat that same experience. I don't want that same negative thing where somebody labeled me as as dumb or stupid or um, or whatever or whatever the case is, that our little person that was hurt in the past, many times will show up and uh, our brain is like, I want to protect her. You know, don't, don't, you know, don't, um, don't do that speaking engagement. Don't go live. Don't write the book. Don't do this. Don't make a suggestion at work. Don't um, stand up as a leader. Don't advocate for yourself. Don't have boundaries um, because we don't want to feel um, somebody else's disappointment or we don't want to feel somebody else's wrath, you know, so um, Gibeon was challenged by God because um, he, I mean, he dived into God, not necessarily the people's opinions, but he decided, okay, well, I'm going to dive into God because that is my maker, right? So we have a maker who formed us and called us, right? So when we dive into God, you know, you, you will automatically um, begin to know who you are because you form a relationship with the person that knew you before he formed you. Does that make sense? When you dive into God, you begin to form a relationship with the person that knew you before he even formed you. 
All right. Because we know that even in Jeremiah, if you check out Jeremiah chapter one, I wasn't even planning on going in all of this. But if you check out Jeremiah chapter one, that's what he told him. He said, I knew you before I even formed you in the womb. Right. And and before you even came out of the womb, I sanctified you and I, you, I gave you a calling as a prophet. So but I'm telling you, before you even exited your mother's womb, you had a calling. There was a calling on your life. Right. So the only pr the way to fulfill our purpose um, is by relationship with God, going back to him. That is, that's foundational teaching, going back to him, defining your DNA, which is what I talk about all the time, because everybody has a crown that awaits them. But many of us are so accustomed to the DNA that we're used to on earth versus manifesting the DNA that, that you know, the, the DNA of Christ that is on the inside of us when we become children of God. So this journey should really, really be about getting to know yourself through Christ. So this was Gibeon's challenge. God um, wanted him to lead an army um, because they were about to be attacked. The children of Israel were about to be attacked. And God was calling Gibeon to be a rescue. Many of you, God is calling to be somebody's rescue. Somebody is waiting on what you're sitting on is one of my favorite quotes by um, a lady named uh, Dr. Uh, Wood. Somebody is waiting on what you're sitting on. Because God, if I'm telling if you are alive, you have purpose and God has deposited something on the inside of you. You're meant to be a generational breaker. You're not meant to remain in a generational pattern that you are familiar with. So what was Gibeon's response? It was a response like many of us. It was like, you know, he looked at the size of his army in comparison to the size of the army that was coming up against him. And that's, we do that. We like, okay, I'm gonna size you up. You know, I'm, yeah, many times we even compare ourselves and then as a result, we feel inadequate. We may do that on social media or in our families, or maybe we're used to being compared um, to, you know, to the next person or to a sibling or whatever the case is. Right. So that's what Gibeon did. He began to compare the size of the army, which seems like, you know, strategic to do, especially when you're operating with probability. It's like, OK, well, historically and the evidence shows and the facts show and the reality is. And when we start to, to reason and analyze, we are not using faith. <laughs> we're using earthly wisdom. Which is why even oh wow, which is why um, the scriptures say that his word says without faith is it is impossible to please God. It's going to take going beyond what you know in order to fulfill your assignment. And it's going to take his hand connected to you, it, it, to, to your hand, what you know, a partnership in order to fulfill your assignment. Right. So Gibeon is like, you know what, I'm sizing up my army against uh, the army that's coming up against us. And he's like, you know what? We, we're the least of them. How can I be a rescue? How can this be my calling? It doesn't make sense. But you're, you know, he was talking to a God. We're talking to a God who also describes himself as I am. I am, you know, we can't put him in a box and he does many things that don't make sense because he wants people to know it was him that did it. So he likes to do things that don't make sense. So human reasoning is not going to fit into it. Right. But there's something about recognizing that we can't do it by ourselves. And when we just put that aside anyway, when we put our human reasoning aside and we realize, well, it's it's meant for us to be dependent on God and we um, obey and sometimes, many times we need support through it. Many times we need support, like-minded people. I was just speaking with someone today about the courage of even outgrowing certain relationships and certain friendships that she had been used to. That it's like the same conversations, the same things, the same things that isn't necessarily pushing her to grow. Beautiful woman, you know, just amazing, courageous woman. And even that takes courage. Right. So if only we obey, our destinies can be unlocked. Do you want your destiny to be unlocked? All right. Even when you're watching this, when you're watching the replay, so just type in the chat. I want my destiny to be unlocked. 
I don't want any more limitation. I don't want to continue making excuses. Today is my day to overcome. I have purpose. I have a plan, right? So, you know, God tells him, I want you to go and um, give me an offering. And not only that, I want you to go take this idol down that is in your father's household. So he's like, all right, God, I'm going to do this. And it, it wasn't that simple. If you go back and read the story, Gibeon is like, OK, well, you know, did God really say this? And if you really did say this, you know, he put God to the test. He did a few different things and he was like, all right, God, don't be mad at me. I'm, I'm doubting that I heard your voice. So I want you to show me a sign. So he, you know, we, which we do the same thing. Like, did God really talk to me? Did God really tell me to go and uh, open an orphanage? Did God really tell me to, you know, to um, be the director of a homeless shelter? Did God really tell me to buy land and, and start um, a house flipping business? Did God really tell me to go into fashion? Did God really tell me to um, be a singer and write songs? Did God really tell me to move? You know, like sometimes we're, we're doubting and we've asked God for instruction. Sometimes we're doubting the instruction. And it's important to also discern God's voice from the enemy's voice and from our own thoughts. Right. And that's even a journey in itself. So uh, he was doubting. But anyways, he, he followed the instructions. He waits until it's nighttime to go and um, pull down this idol and he takes some help with him. He had, you know, some key people who were there to help. All right. And uh, he waited. He waited until it was nighttime because he didn't want his father in the household and the people in the village that was used to that idol being there. There was a false God that they would worship. They were so used to that idol being there. He was like, I'm not going to do it while it's daytime because they're going to be mad, be mad at me. So he he did it while it was nighttime. Uh, the next morning, they were definitely upset. They were upset. And they even. Um, you know, we're like, oh, you know, the, you know, this person should be destroyed. But fortunately, his father actually ended up um, sticking up for him. Right. His father stuck up for him. Let me tell you, God will also give us instructions and tell us to do some things that are just uncomfortable, that are daunting, that we're afraid of. Right. And it goes against the grain of what we're used to. You know, our family members may not understand. It may not fit in with what we've done before or what the people around us in, the, in our environment is used to, which is why it's so important to be in an environment where your seeds can grow. Where people are not just talking about the same thing and another year has passed and they're talking about the same thing. But not implementing. Right. And this is not about. Um, uh, you know, this is not a condemnation uh, message. Remember, there is no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So even creating discipline is a journey. It is a journey, but it's it's within us. It is it is absolutely within you. Right. God is the same yesterday, today and forever also means he is consistent. That means if he is consistent and we're made in his image, it is in us to be consistent. And many times we just need accountability and support. We need to be in the right environment. I am more likely to push myself and go if I have also, if I'm around individuals who are also doing that as well, who are with me in this season, okay? Which I call like destiny helpers, like godly connections, good friendships, Right. So anyways, they're upset. Right. His father stands up for him. He was like, you know what? If Baal, that was the name of the, the false God. He said, if Baal has a power, let um, this uh, um, uh, let him destroy the one that took the idol down. Not only that, they ended up even changing uh, Gibeon's name to something called Jerubel. Jerubel. Like they, they changed his name based off of an action that they thought he did wrong. Like how many of us are used to that as well? Like maybe we made a mistake in the past and sometimes, you know, we are, you know, rehearsing that mistake or we're counting ourselves out. We're feeling like the least of them. So we, you know, don't take certain opportunities in the future. We don't speak up like, you know, it, it, it is in us to speak up. We don't set maybe certain boundaries. We don't advocate or sometimes to go to the extreme and it's like maybe we've become, overly aggressive or, you know, rigid or whatever the case is, we're, we're dancing on these extremes 
that's not truly like us. It doesn't really honor um, who we are in Christ because we've internalized a label from the past. Or, you know, because we made we made a mistake and now someone is identifying us by that label. I know I've been I've been through that. I know I'm not. I know it's not just, you know, it's not just me, though, but I've certainly been through that. Right. I've counted myself out. I've made mistakes and I felt like the least of them. Right. So um, anyhow, he's like, OK, you know, that's fine. So, um, so time goes on, time goes on. And, um, what happens next? Um, so God has a conversation with Gibeon and, uh, he says, all right, so there's like 32,000 soldiers, which is a lot, but the army that they were going up against was still much larger. They were bigger. They were larger. And he said, you know what? Even though that army is larger and you have 32,000, that's too many. I actually want you to downsize. So again, if with the, you know, a, a mind, like when we're reasoning, like, hold on, that doesn't make sense. Like, wouldn't we want more? I already feel like I'm the least of them. We already feel like our army's the weakest. But when you have God on your side, labels don't matter. Statistics don't matter. Demographics don't matter. Your mindset is what matters. And you renewing your mind and you understanding who you are through Christ because you are a peculiar treasure. And even decree that over yourself. Like that is a Monday tip right there. A crowning Monday moment tip is even to decree of yourself. I am a peculiar treasure. I have the salt and the light. I am a solution. I am meant to be different. I am made for this. With God, I will always win because this, you're speaking truth over yourself. So that is so, 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 so important. That is so important, especially the times that we're in, y'all. This year is going to be, you know, there's you're going to see a lot of different things happening. How do I know this? Because of prophecy. So you're going to see a lot of different things happening. But in God, you're, you will have Peace. It doesn't mean you're not going to be challenged, but you can have peace. You can have rest. Because you'll know, uh -uh, I'm not going to be I'm not going to choose to be anxious about this. Because all the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Right. So he's like. God is like, I want everybody to know. That it was me that did this. So I want the army to downsize. So, you know, he told him, he said, um, I think he said, like, at the top of the mountain, tell them if anybody is afraid, you can go ahead and go home. So Gibeon tells them, he's like, all right, if you're afraid, you can go home. Automatically, I think 20,000 leaves, 20,000 soldiers leave. And it leaves him with only 10,000. God says, that's still too much. He said, that's still too much. And I want them to actually do a test. And after they do this test, I'm going to distinguish who's going to, you know, who should stay and who should leave. So he has them do the test. Only 300 people pass the test. Y'all go and read it. <laughs> Only 300 people pass this test. I'm thirsty. Um, Only 300 people pass this test, right? Uh, so all the other people leave. So now it's just Gibeon and 300 soldiers. But God is like, I got this. It doesn't matter if you think, you know, we don't have a, a, a plan. I have the plan, you know, with it's uh, as long as you're in his divine timing and he will unction you. He will let you know, OK, this is the time. Meanwhile, still follow the instructions, because sometimes we just just stop altogether, you know, and we do nothing. And then, you know, unless God says do nothing. But many times there are things that he is telling us to do in the preparation period, and then you go, and then you launch. And as you, you know, develop a relationship with God, you'll, you'll pick up on those things. All right, I'm going to be working on this. I'm going to build my consistency. I'm not going to get discouraged. I'm not going to, you know, uh, focus on, on the people or the giants or what I think is a giant when, you know, when I serve the one true God, the creator, the maker of all, right? So, um, 
Y'all, like essentially what he does, God does is he sends confusion into the enemy's camp and the enemy begins to fight each other. They begin to fight each other. So Gibeon and his army really didn't have to put forth a, you know, a whole lot of effort. Right. You know, so they end, they win, they win and people know, okay, no, God, the God, the one true God is certainly with Gibeon is certainly with him. So when we humble ourselves, or we are not just like looking at, you know, our limitations and we just realize, okay, you know, with God in my weaknesses, his strength is made perfect. I'm not by myself. I'm not lonely. You know, God can use anybody and he will exalt the humble as long as you are, um, as long as you are humble, as long as you are connected and submitted to him great things will happen. It is meant for you to do great exploits. It is meant for you to do great things while you are here. You are a whole mission wrapped up in a fleshly suit. Okay. Like you are a mission. You have a calling on your life. So Gibeon's crowning moment was realizing that it doesn't matter if you have, you know, just a few a handful of people with you as long as God is with you, as long as you're in his will. So even the final revelation I got from that, like 32,300, you don't need everybody. You don't need a whole like, you know, hundreds of people. If I were to even look at my phone list, like there's so many contacts that I can actually delete that I've been it's just like a placeholder, you know, that's been in here for years and years and years, just kind of taking up space. Even think about that. You know, like are, are, are these relationships that are helping you? And I'm not and this is not about like being, you know, divisive or I'm not taking anybody with me to this next level. What I'm just saying is not everybody is meant to to go with you. Sometimes we're hanging on to relationships and it's actually relationships that don't benefit us. It could be toxic relationships. That's what I'm talking about. So he cleared all, he cleared out who wasn't supposed to be there. And essentially he put his destiny helpers there. I pray that he will show you who your destiny helpers are, who those godly connections are that are going to help you get to the next level who are there to be there with you, who are meant to be there with you when you win in the winning because you are meant to win. You're born to win. You shall win. OK, it is time for you to define your DNA. It is time for you to explore who you are through Christ. It is an amazing journey. It is an amazing journey. I'm telling you, y'all, I'm on this thing. All right. I am your sister in transformation. God bless you. Take care. Tag a sister that you believe that will, that will it will help her. And if you're in the Facebook group, invite a sister. Invite a sister. Anyways, I love.